So what we have here is a land applied York rake. And the issue I have is I've got a category two quick catch for my M6040 Kubota. And all these rakes pretty much come in category one setups. And I am not swapping back and forth my quick catch. I love that thing. So what we're gonna go about doing is converting this from cat one to cat two spacing. Category one runs 25 inches between the pins. I'm just gonna put these things on. We need it in a second. So what that means is if you measure from the inside to the inside, it's right around 25. And this one actually is 25 and a quarter the way they welded it up. Yeah. So to go to category two, we need 32 inches on the inside. So 25 to 32 is seven inches. So I got a piece of steel here. That's a box. And I sorted through my scrap pile and I found one that will actually fit right up and in and weld in the same spot as that end piece. So I can cut the welds out, take that end cap off, put an extension in and weld it all in place. So what I'm gonna do is I know I only need what three and a half inches if I need a seven inch extension on each side, but we're gonna split this 11 inch piece in half. So we have five and a half in, and that should give me, with doing the quick math, I only need three and a half sticking past, a couple inches to bridge and support. I think it's gonna do quite well. Um, the only thing you have to be aware of when you do these is you wanna always be able to access the other end of these pins to be able to swap them out. And where I'm only gonna have a couple inches of box tubing here, I think I can fit with a socket and an extension. I just gotta make sure the nut for a category, category two pin will fit. I know the little tiny nuts are category one will, but I'd like to upgrade these, even these end pieces out eventually and put a category two on. So I'm gonna make sure the nut will fit. But that's my plan and the box tubing we have is three and a half by two and a half. I think that's gonna be plenty heavy. Most of this is made out of the same material, almost quarter inch steel. So anyhow, I'm gonna double check the measurement to make sure a nut for a category two pin will fit inside of that. So if I wanna swap that out eventually and we'll go to grinding. So that's the game plan. So for right now, I'm gonna cut out the original end piece and we're using the category one pins. I have a tapered reamer, and I'll show you guys. It can take a hole and you can ream it out without having to redrill. And I can swap that out to a true category two or category three pin. The category two is gonna be perfect because it's an inch and five eighths book nut, and there's a two and an eighth inch opening in there. So I should be able to put a category two pin in no problem, and then I can bushing up from a category two to a three for my backing up. All the quick hitches, don't match the size they actually are categorized as. So category one implements run cat two bushings. Category two implements use cat three bushings on the quick itch. Don't know why they go a size up. It's stupid, it drives me crazy. But anyhow, I digress. We're gonna go ahead and start cutting and grinding. I love those Bauer grinders, they're cheap. They're like 44 bucks. They last a couple years. Me beating the living daylights out of them on the farm and love them things. So, just a quick seam weld. I'm gonna see if I can cut straight in. Beautiful. Back when I gotta cut the hair more out of. That should weld pretty nice and true. Top's not that far off. Alright, so. Should. Oh yeah, that fits like a glove. Should be able to weld that in like so. Not a problem. So, only thing I have to do is cut this baby in half. Grabbing some metal chalk and a square. 
We'll get that thing marked up and cut up. Too crooked. We have 11 and a quarter, so five and five eighths. I do it pretty nicely. Yeah, hair over. Sides are perfect. Inside one's on the inside edge. Alright. Let's cut her up. That's gonna come out pretty, pretty ghost though. Perfect. Just gonna make sure that bolt gets centered, so we can upgrade it to a cat too if we want to. That is gorgeous. All right, so that's one side. So when we go to place it, I need it three inches past. Three and a half inches past. Close. Well, back it up. My bad. <laughs> Three inches, half inches past, including a, what, almost half inch plate? Half inch plate. So if we want three and a half inch, we want three inches past, it'll be perfect. So my original placement was actually dead on. That's at three inches. Nice. One of the original metal, not where the weld's at. Three and an eighth. Not where the weld's at. Three and an eighth. Just hair back in. Oh, that's too far. Ah. Let's just see where she ended up. Right, there's no metal in the weld. Back to where I started. All right, taking it very easy. Three inches, three inches. All right, so. When we get done, I'll tack weld it on the outside, probably flop this baby over, weld her underneath. Should come out pretty good. So we're going to do the same thing on the side opposite, but you guys have already seen one side done. So I'm going to save the camera space, we'll come back. Thank you. 
All right. So we've got our end plates welded on. Now we're just going to do the spacings and get it to 32 on the narrow end to end. So we need about three inches pass on each, three and a half pasty on each one of these. So they're blistering hot. So we're going to just trial and error it a couple times. That melted my tape. Oh, that's within a sixteenth. All right, where's this one at? Half inch out. Whoo, hot. Whoo, hot. Eighth under. Close. All right. Quarter under, perfect. Almost there. Instead of clamping on and clamping, I'm just gonna grab a hammer if I can tap those out a little bit. Whew, hot. This one's gonna come out. Eight. Also realizing. Takes a lot to get them square, too. Oh, almost dead on. Three and a half. Right. This one, from the truest spot I can find. 16. And I also gotta make sure it's square. Hold on a second. Grabbing my drywall square. Oh, no good square spots. Toes in a hair on that one. Must not have gotten that ground. Exactly right. Oh, it just shifted real easy. Nice. Let's try that. Oh, that looks good. Of course, this one I did wrong way too. But oh, that looks really good. End to end. Eighth under 32. Oh, that's right. If you run these with the nut on the outside, those nuts take some of the space up for that 32 spacing. So I don't want exactly 32 the outside if I want to run a, a nut on it. So we want it actually fair under. I wish I had a true category two implement to measure. I'm gonna run out and double check off my uh, quick hitch, what it has for measurements. So what we ran into is the outside measurement you need at 32 inches gives you about 38 to play on either side. Those nuts are almost a half inch thick on the grade two, uh, category two bolts, uh, pins. So I need to shrink this back to just three inches of extra, take a half an inch off each side to make up room for the nut. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna back it into three Set a three and a half on each side and while they're up. And that will allow me to swap, take the tapered reamer, clean up the holes, put category two bolts in and we'll be good to go. So.
all that work and finessing to get three and a half on the nose. All right, now we get to square them back up again. All right, grabbing my big T-square, drywall square. <laughs> Still pretty damn close. That's even prettier. So we're gonna come back to this one. I can't tell any better than that by eye. So, double check the outer. Should be at 31 now. Dead on mess on. All right, all that aside, throw my helmet on, get the speaker and mic away from the welding, and we'll get her welded up. We get it tacked in on both sides. And we'll be good to go. So what I gotta do now is see if I can flip this thing over. I do not do well holding upside down. So I'm not even gonna bother trying. So I'm gonna see if I can tip it up and see if I can weld it from the other side. But so far, I'm happy with how this came out. So I was able to muscle her over, flip her upside down. Everything lines up pretty damn good. I'm gonna do a poor job because I didn't grind inside and I should have done it beforehand clean up where the welds go but I'm just going to go ahead and burn through the paint and get some reattachments on the inside and paint her up and call her good Take a quick look at how things came out. Stealing you guys from the stand. So, we were able to weld around that box pretty well. It's still wide open to put a nut on and swap that out to a category two pin. Same on this one. Get all the way around it. So, the only thing I have left to do is order a set of category two pins ream out the holes with the reamer which I hopefully have enough memory left on the phone for you guys to be able to see and I gotta ream out the hole up top because I don't want to do a small pin in bushing I'm just gonna put a category 2 pin up top too and be done with it so let me see if I can get this thing flipped over and see how far I get today or if we come back to this another time sorry for the wind it's a little windy out here but we've made some progress on the York rate conversion to category two. We got the extensions welded in the other day. And off camera, I swapped out the category one pins or category one to two 
adapter pin. So AKA the thread and the hole is the same as category one. The absolute diameter is a category two. And I have a category two to three bushing pinned on, which is what the lovely quickages actually do. They always go one category up from where they're at. So we got a category one hole with a category one to two adapter pin, and then a category two to three bushing pinned on. And it's good to go. And that is awesome. So what we have left is we got the two pins on the bottom swapped out to category two. What we have to do up here up top is the setting for the category two, which I believe is here, actually has to have a larger pin or a pin and bushing. And since I already have a homemade tapered reamer with a nut, yes, bun, hold on a second. Oh, sorry. Let's see, get this thing to focus. You can, come on off. There's a tapered reamer with a nut welded on the end of it that I can slide a socket onto. So I can use my lovely impact to run it. It's a lot nicer than using a heavy duty drill and having it spin around and knock. If it binds up, that little bit of impact breaks off those burrs and it goes pretty slick. Um, I made that tapered reamer for redoing a steering cylinder end on a 1066 IH. And it comes in handy. Every time I need a larger hole, there's a slight taper to it, but you can take any hole and ream it out to whatever size you want. So that's what I gotta do. I reamed out one side and this lovely category two pin fits like a charm. Barely any play, less play than with the rattle box head up top. So I gotta do the same thing on the other side and we're done.